And a lot of times we musicians think we're holding it a long time, but that's not really what happens. You can take more freedom here when you do this and, and really just allow it to sit and linger because we want that pain and that sorrow to go there. Now, I've, I've grown to really like not taking a huge break when I go on into the next phrase. I like to just cut the note off and then just let it subside and fall away. It's sort of like you're up here shouting a strifle and then it's gone and then you just collapse. You can play with this. I think you can allow that to just hang in the air for a while. Let the E hang. Let it kind of, let the reverberation in the room fall and then continue the phrase. I think that's a personal choice and I think you just need to practice and, and just discover what sounds the best for you and what you like and what your interpretation is of that phrase. After we've hit our climactic part of our composition, the composer now gives us a DS and it takes us back to the beginning, takes us through the first theme, into the second theme, and then of course takes us on a closing jump to the end of the piece at rehearsal 13 and takes us out. Uh, really he finishes the piece at that spot with that slow lyrical melodic B melody, but then at the very end he gives us a coda into the character of the first melody. And I think he's really being very, very playful with all of this, and it's really a lot of fun. And I think you should experiment. He's got a tempo at 15 of a half note equals 104, but I think you could experiment with this and really make this a flashy ending if you would like. He's increased it, of course, on his own, but I think this is a general guideline. If you can play this ending faster, then I encourage you to do so. I keep it within context, but I think it really allows itself to do that. Uh, make it very, very vibrant, lots of good, fast vibrato. Notice the half step motion that he's using in here. Really bring those half steps out from the A sharp to the B natural right after 15. And then you notice how in, the, in the, the phrase that he's going down, it's all half steps. And then he gives us a really nice chromatic scale going up. So really make those very pronounced as you go through it. Here's 15, listen to how these half steps work. Really emphasize the tension in the leading tone half step. And then a little bit of a diminuendo when you hit the resolution. Here is uh, 15. The, the ending is really quite whimsical. It gives you uh, not a quite chromatic figure, but very, very close. But he changes the tempo entirely, and he just kind of makes it just a very, very nice, calm, relaxing, kind of fun kind of ending. So really just have fun with the last of the ending. Uh, just be very careful not to slow it down more than what the tempo is. I think it's going to lose the character. And it really is supposed to be funny, and it's supposed to be comical. So make sure that as you play it, you make it comical and have a lot of fun especially the last notes. Uh, my students, when they play us, most people will have a little chuckle at the end when they hit that last measure. Thank you very much for listening to this video of Fantasy by Denis Bada. Uh, I hope that you really seriously consider performing this piece. I think it's a great piece. I don't know if it's on very many contest lists, but it's really a worthwhile composition to, to learn. It's going to show your maturity as a musician in the slow lyrical sections with vibrato and tone and sound. It's got great technique exercises and technique in the melodic material, and I think it could be a very impressive work for you. Also remember to look at Saxophone Today. I thank David Gibson, their publisher, uh, for showing this video and linking it on the publication. But Saxophone Today would be a great uh, magazine for you to look at. Uh, it's got articles and interviews by uh, famous saxophonists throughout the country. There's much you can learn from them. The interviews were great. I think you'd be surprised at what all of these saxophonists in the country are doing. And I think you'll probably find that some of them are playing in your own backyards and you should be able to go and listen to them perform live and get lots of tip, help and hints and tips from them at their master classes and that kind of thing. So look them up. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>